Hi, Kevin Purcell for Church Tech Today with Proclaim 2.0. This is an update that just came out last uh, November from Faith Life, the makers of Logos Bible Software and the great Logos 7, which I reviewed recently at Church Tech Today. I want to show it off to you. Notice as we open it up here, um, what we have is the uh, preview mode. Let's go into edit mode. Up here at the top, you have your menus. This along this side is called the order of service. Now notice it has a pre-service loop, a warm-up section, a service, and then the post-service loop. So you got pre-service, warm-up, service, and post-service. Now I've only created a few slides in the service section. Pre-service loop is uh, looping. So if you got like five slides and you start it maybe half an hour before your service and make it so that each one of these advances every 30 seconds or so, it's going to keep over and over and over again showing those five slides. Things like announcements, uh, your church website, your social media links, things like that. You might also have, um, you know, shut up your cell phones and <laughs> things like that in there. Now the warm up, you could put a countdown video or maybe a, a commercial for uh, one of your church ministries or an upcoming event. Services, this is where you're going to put your song lyrics and your Bible um, slides and the slides that show up for your uh, sermon, that sort of thing. And then you have a post-service loop that works just like the pre-service loop, only at the end. So let me go ahead and show you what you do here. Now to add a new one, we've got the, the song O oh, Four Thousand Tongues. You want to add a new item, go to Add Item, and notice all the different things you can add here. There's song lyrics, Bible, on-screen Bible, that's kind of a video Bible. It, We'll show you one of those here in a second. Content, that's a like a text slide. You can also drop a, a, a graphic on it. Uh, an announcement slide, a video, uh, image slideshow. You can even put a web page, put a survey, and uh, that interacts with uh, the Bible app from Logos, Logos Bible or Faith Life Study Bible, and then show the survey re results maybe at the end of the service. Uh, you can also import from Keynote, a uh, couple of other third-party services like Planning Center Online, uh, Elvanto. Here you can add cues uh, for starting recording and then a start confidence timer. Um, recordings, notice I've got links for recording. This is to record your sermon audio. Maybe you want to record that. You'll have a, link, a, a cable coming from your church's um, soundboard into the computer and it'll record the audio, which then you can later on upload either to Faith Life or somewhere else. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll add a new item. We're going to add, oops, I picked Bible. Let's, let's start with a song lyric. And if we want the song title, we're going to do Amazing Grace. Everybody knows that. You'll search for that. Notice it pops up and it's going to see, have you used this before? Is it in your song database? Yes, it is. Uh, Proclaim comes with a few already. Maybe you are a subscriber to Song Select from uh, the Christian Copyright Licensing, um, I forget what I stands for, CCLI. Uh, you can add it from there. This is the newer version with Chris Tomlin. Um, or you can go down here to Faith Life Hymn Base. The Faith Life Hymn Base is a service that they've created. They have their own database of hymns. Let's go ahead and add it from the Faith Life Hymn Base. Once you add it, you can. Uh, check these boxes down here. In fact, you can start and add a presentation. You can show the credits on the first lyric, show the title on the first lyric. The credits are this part down here, the title's up here. Maybe you want to put your hymn number. What if uh, in your hymn book it's 399? You got some old school folks who like to uh, look at the hymn book when they sing. All right, so then up here you can customize which verses. Maybe you're only going to sing the first three verses and uh, there you go. So you have this now, it's, it's in here ready to go, but you say, no, I want a different background. You can change it using one of a few different ways. First of all, you can put one of these pre-created uh, backgrounds. Let's use that one, it's kind of dark. Um, has almost like a chalkboard look to it. Or you can open up the Finder app in Mac or Windows um, uh, file manager and you can just drag and drop so let's grab that one um, that's not a nice graphic but it is a, a screenshot 
from you know uh, uh, this program but uh, you can put it in here and rearrange the size so that it uh, whoops all right so we can get that to fill the screen it's sinking immediately so it does feel a little bit sluggish uh, while you're doing that but that's one way to do it now obviously that doesn't look good I wouldn't use this graphic um, and so I you know go ahead and delete that but you can do that and that's one of the cool ways to do it or uh, you go from background background and uh, uh, let, let's say we use this one but we want the image to blur slightly click on that let it update is it going to do it for us? <laughs> Making a liar out of me. That's supposed to blur that image out a bit. I'm not sure why it's not working. Maybe it only works if you import. So let's open this and throw that on there. All right. Oh, I see. That's right. The blur, what it does is it if it's like a tall thing, you know, maybe a phone shot, then it puts uh, a blurred uh, bar on both sides, taking part of the, the picture from the phone uh, image. So there you go. That's the way that, that works. Now, in the future, if I want to add an item, I can go in here and notice it's there. It's ready to go. And so I can add and reuse that, uh, that item. And if I want to, I can add back verse 3. Maybe next week we want to actually sing verse 3. So that's adding um, a song lyric. You can delete that. Add a Bible. We've got one in here already. There's two kinds of Bible. First of all, just a basic Bible text slide. Notice it has a signal. So if you've got the Logos Bible app installed on your phone or your tablet, uh, you'll see it pop up there if you ha uh, have location-based services turned on in the app. We also have these on-screen Bible. Notice how we had on-screen Bible. We'll give you a preview of what that looks like. Hit the play button. And it's really a video that uh, shows the text of, uh, of the Bible. So that's how you add things. You can add all kinds of things. We'll do an image slideshow, add images, browse media. And so uh, now we can import files and, you know, create yourself a folder full of images and drop them in there or you can reuse things that are already uh, in here for example you know this Christmas let's uh, add that one there you go wishing you peace and joy for Christmas up here we have the the date you can change the date here you have your recordings. This is the start and ending of the recording. We talked about recording sermon video. Uh, we won't go into detail about that. But here you have the edit and preview. Preview turns on this so you can see your slides here in the center of the screen. Notice you also get preview thumbnails at the bottom. You can scroll through here. Uh, but then it's time to go on air. Preview lets you just see them on this screen. On air will send it to your external display. You need a second screen hooked up to your computer for this to work. Otherwise, it's just going to show right here on the, the main screen. Um, you hit on air, and it's going to uh, pop up and, and... Oh, actually, I was on air that whole time. So let's uh, go on air, and it starts showing it. Now, you're not going to see it, but on my second screen, I've got this slide, and that's all that's showing. You don't get all this extraneous stuff here on the sides. And what's cool is they have these quick screens, you know. What if uh, the preacher says something really cool and you just, amen. <laughs> uh, or maybe there's something, whoops, I put the wrong slide up, uh, so let's blank it. All right, so it's going to blank the screen. Um, if you have your church's logo set up, you can put that there. Uh, I, I've got, it has the, comes with the Proclaim logo. And then it has an on-screen Bible. It's not going to show that for some reason. Last shown then goes back to what was the most recent. 
uh, thing shown. And then when you have that, you can also erase the text. We'll put the text back and notice how this one says no text again. Those are kind of cool. Over here on this side, we have a section. Normally this would come open. This is for your team. Uh, you can get news from Logos, that kind of thing. Your members, that shows all the members of your team. These are messages that your team might have posted. You'll set up a, a faith life group for your team. And uh, so you can put it in there. If you have that group, you just would set it up here and post a new message, say maybe to all the team members, hey, everybody, get your slides in before Friday at noon so that I can put it all together, something like that. But you can hide that, I think. Yes, you can. It's kind of a small button. They need to be bigger. And then hide that so you can work better if you're in edit mode. And that gives you more screen real estate to edit with. That's Proclaim. As, a, as you can see, because it syncs instantly, it can be a little sluggish, especially if you have a very slow internet um, provider. Uh, the template situation, you, you have to kind of do a workaround where you create a new blank presentation and then create all the templates you want. So maybe you could, you know, create a new blank presentation then have a, a, a slide and call it new songs or slide template, a new Bible template, new content template, you know, for all the different things that you can add, new web page template. Uh, so you have to make them yourselves essentially and and I don't like that I wish they would do a little bit better job of uh, creating a really nice template editor like some of the other worship presentation programs have then the third thing is the cost can be a little bit expensive um, let's go over here to proclaim online is the website and then click on the pricing tab you notice it goes by size first so 100 to one one to 199 then 100 to 199 200 to 499 on up uh, to above 2500 so let's say you church you know you average about 125 in worship here's what it's going to cost you if you pay annually like one time a year it'll cost 1875 times 12 so what's that cost come out to let's do the math so for the basic it's going to cost you 225 dollars Okay. If you want to add access to Pro Media and 50 meg gigabytes of storage for your um, audio recordings, you know you can record sermons. Uh, then it's going to be 28.12 per month annually. But what if you want to pay monthly? You just want to try it out monthly. So that's 37.50. So that jumps it up what? Almost uh, nine dollars, around but nine bucks. The premium. This is where it gets really expensive, and that's because you get access to the Pro Media Library, 16,000 motion stills and mini movies from Graceway, Church Motion Graphics, Dan Stevers, Free Bridge, Igniter, and Playback. That's going to get expensive, especially if you're a mega church. 154.89 a month. Whereas you can buy Proclaim, uh, I'm sorry, Media Shout for about $400, and in three months you've paid for it. Now you're not getting access to all this media. These are all subscription services as well. For example, Graceway I think is like $400 a year by itself. So, you know, you, it, you gotta figure up the math. Is it worth it? If you don't use a lot of the extra services, just go down here. Just get the 50 bucks a month. You know, that's gonna cost you $600 a year. But if you don't use all that service, you might say, well, you know, it's a lot cheaper to use uh, media shout if you're a, a mega church so it's up to you most churches there aren't very many of those most of us are going to be in the you know 100 to maybe 500 range probably most of us really in the 100 to 200 uh, 1 to 200 range so it's going to be a lot cheaper for us I like Proclaim I think it works a lot better I tried it when they first released it and I was not happy with it then and we quit using it at our church and went back to media shout um, we're probably not going to change from media shout to Proclaim even after this review but uh, if you don't own worship presentation software or you're using PowerPoint or Keynote on a Mac, uh, really download this. Give it a try. It's got a 30-day free trial. You can go here and download it for Mac or Windows. It's cool. They also have some uh, 
apps that allow you to control the program remotely. Uh, if you want to do that, if you're so daring, <laughs> open up, let's see, the Google Play app and what it looks like. So here, you know, you've got an option. You could actually run the app instead of sitting back at the back computer. If you're the, if you're in a small congregation, you're the, kind of the lone wolf as the pastor or the music director, and you have to be up at the front, but you still want to control it, you can do that with the app, uh, that kind of thing. Works really well. So... I'm going to say it's a positive, it's a buy with only a couple of weaknesses, some sluggishness with a slow internet connection and the template situation is not to my liking. But other than that, it's a really good program, a really nice tool. It's grown and matured an awful lot and it's very versatile. Probably the easiest to use now, whereas it used to be one of the most complicated to use. Uh, however, it's also, like most things with Faith Life and Logos, it's, it's more expensive. I didn't even talk about the interaction between Logos Bible Software. You can open up Logos Bible Software, uh, use their new sermon uh, editor. So if you go in here to Tools and um, let's see, no documents, create a new sermon, which is what I've got here. And then let's say this was going to be a point in my sermon. I can now create a um, slide here. I can edit this slide and then uh, when I'm done actually you edit it and then let's uh, send to send to proclaim so now when I open up proclaim and I add media Where is it? It's not there. It didn't quite work right. So, you know, there you see. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. I don't I haven't done this much, but uh it seems like that's the way it ought to work unless I have to select it first. I don't know why I would. Update sermon. Export send to proclaim let's do that do it from here send now it's notice that it's uploading it okay so now we open proclaim huh see now it's edited twice let's take it offline put it in edit mode here we go now the new content is down here ready for you to work with all right so you can then drag it up like that that's really the first time i've done that so uh i haven't hadn't shown you that so i'm glad i got the chance to but this is proclaim 2.0 nice update and this is the review you'll find it more information over at churchtechtoday.com thanks for watching